And I need to get off the stage because we have a wonderful keynote kicking us off. This has been our keynote for the last two SnapCons, and we're so delighted to have our, our, our team of Jens and Yaga. If you don't know, Jens and Yaga are the core team behind Snap. Uh, Jens was one of the early authors of BYOB, which became Snap, and Yagja joined the team. And they are delightful, delightful presenters, and they are delightful in terms of how many ideas they are bringing to this community. They have MOOCs. If you want to ask them about how to, how to connect with their MOOCs, they've made some wonderful MOOCs. And I mean, I continue to get inspired by them every time that I, I, I hear them on stage. And I just, I just was their host. I made sure I signed up for their workshop because I wanted to hear what they had to say. They were just a great workshop that just finished there. So. The topic of this is what's new in STAP. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a hand for Jens and Yago. Woo! All right. The stage is yours. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. Wow. Uh, I think I can go home now. Uh, you've basically done everything. Um, hi, Yadga. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, so this session is about what's new in SNAP, but there's also really a bigger theme to this conference. Let me actually share my screen and try to, oh, wait, I can't share my screen. Dan, can you make it so I can share my screen, please? So this, um, now, thank you. So can you, can you see it now? I guess you can, right? Um, so, Welcome to SnapCon 2021. Um, this SnapCon really is special in that this time we're trying something new. Um, the last times it was more about Snap and the Snap community. And if you've looked at the program this year, it's a little bit different. This year, it's more about um, looking outside of our box um, and to forks of Snap, other uses of Snap in other applications. Um, and I'm really, really very excited to, to hear all the other keynotes about uses of, 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 of Snap in Nets blocks for uh, the Internet of Things, about Turtle Stitch, which is something that I've loved from the very beginning. And it's, it's really about broadening the ideas that we can do with it. It's really about this whole world out there. And speaking of world, um, uh, this is really just a project that um, Yadga and I made really literally a couple of hours um, before to kind of see what is. So actually, um, kind of one of the persons that started it all is Brian. Uh, hi, Brian. Uh, so Brian is, I think, uh, close to Dan, at least at this scale, in, in California now in Berkeley, but this is where uh, Yetka and I am. So there, there's actually kind of half the world in between us. And this already shows us really the most amazing thing about our community. Um, if you just look at the some of the core people involved in making SNAP happen at the curriculum. And by the way, everybody that I'm mentioning here, it's I'm just taking a bunch of names and try to find out some locations. I'm missing way more people than should be in here. So here we've got Yatka and me in Germany. We've got Bernat in, in Catalonia and in, in, in Spain. Then there's Mary and Paul in, in, in Boston. There's Brian and Dan. And of course, we had to put Michael on Hawaii because he was there on vacation while uh, important discussions and, and, and things took place. So this is really something where we're kind of almost getting into some international waters here. There have been contributions from, and we'll see spectacular contributions from Turgut in Cappadocia in Turkey, together with Darius in Poland. And we're gonna see that, they're gonna present it um, about using robots. Um, there have been contributions about a new Hindi translation. Um, and there have been wonderful discussions with Simon about Turtle Stitch. And then there is, way more people involved. These are people that will also present at the SnapCon that are really inspirations. Uh, for example, 
you'll see in a minute something that is Wolfgang here, uh, Wolfgang from Graz, Pocket Code, Turtle Stitch. We have this long-standing friendship. And so we're, um, we've actually stolen uh, some of the ideas from Pocket Code uh, that we're working on now. And I hope we have inspired Pocket Code some of our ideas. So that's a really great um, uh, relationship. There is, of course, John uh, in Boston, who's, who's who's responsible for many of the new things you'll find in SNAP and, and Kathy working on microblocks. Um, and the biggest part of this, of this conference is gonna be all the forks. Um, so we're gonna start with this conference with some of the forks. You're gonna see Andrea present Turtle Stitch. Last year, you saw Eckhart from Göttingen and Eckhart has also worked on a new fork, a new extension of SNAP, which is called SciSnap. Sci um, for, for all kinds of machine learning and science. There's Joan um, in Catalonia with Snap for Arduino. Um, there is Ken with his artificial intelligence version of Snap. And we're, we're really trying to make it so that every one of these extensions or forks can keep working and, and really get something out of this. There's, there's new forks like Paul's um, micro world for elementary math. There is Dux and Eric uh, with Beetle Blocks, also aided by Bernard. Um, Tiffany has been responsible for some of the forks. Dan is working on a new fork. Of course, Brian and Akash will hear about them. And this here, I think, is Ron working with the culturally situated design tools version of Snap. So this is really a lot of folks um, all over the world. Um, and it's, it's kind, of, um, kind of fun to see everybody here. And we're really spanning the world with this. Um, I'm sure I missed some, somebody, oh yeah, the contributors. Um, and if we draw this big enough, uh, we've, as Brian used to say, we've taken over the world. No, we're not. It's, it's really something that is very diverse and very, very inspiring for us. So as we've prepared, as, as Yatka and I've thought about, um, kind of what this really is about. Um, we were focusing on the idea of forks. And this has been a, a problem and inspiration because a fork is a great thing. Somebody takes Snap and turns it into something entirely new, but it also seems like a missed opportunity. Wouldn't it be nice if we could follow all these forks? And uh, we kind of get a little emotional by this, and maybe um, uh, you all know, I'm pretty sure you all know this poem by Robert Frost about the road not taken, and it culminates in this, that when I was in junior high school in upstate New York, this is what somebody kind of wrote into my yearbook, kind of about it, the two rows that diverged, and then kind of the poet says, but I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And they always meant it like, oh, this is a praise of individualism. But of course it's not because if you read the whole poem is really a parody. It's a parody about uh, Frost's uh, friend, uh, Thomas, who was always agonizing about, well, what could we have seen if we had taken the other road? And it, it seems that um, as the roads are forking and as time goes by, these forks grow exponentially and it's not about the road less traveled by, it's about all those roads that we couldn't take. Um, and this is something that we're really thinking about a lot, like about missed opportunities. And I'm not gonna, on this happy note, I'm gonna yield to Yadka uh, to kind of explore this some more. Uh, thanks Jens, I will just try to share my screen. Um, um, so we've tried to come up with a visualization of that and as it turns out um, Robert Frost kind of was a turtle geometrist as well because what he describes is basically a tree structure. Um, so we all know about trees thanks to Logo and Cynthia and uh, Brian. Um, he describes a road um, which is something like that and as soon as I get to an interception I have to decide which path I want to take. So as Jens just described, if we if we keep on doing that, we're missing out on a lot of things. So here I prepared that little um, script that can draw 
a tree and you can see that the roads that I'm that I that I can't take are, as Jens mentioned, exponentially growing, which is kind of sad, especially when um, we think uh, of it from the tree example again. On on some other branches, there might be more beautiful fruits or more beautiful flowers that we have, and. Of course, I wanted to program the flower. This is why I also took this example because it's still my favorite um, beginner's example. So let's try to create the flowers on the other branches. Um, I already prepared a block here um, that we can use for it. Um, and as we all know, to draw a flower, we can just stamp uh, petals on the stage. So I also prepared three petals here um, that we can use. And for example, uh, we can just um, repeat the number of petals that we indicate in our block. We can just try it out here later. Um, let's uh, prepare our script and let's show the sprite so we can see whether it works. Awesome. Okay, so this is our super small, let's make it a little bigger. Um, this is our super small um, petal. And to get to a flower, that we want to reach on our road, we need to repeat something the number of petals times. And what we need to repeat is we want to stamp the petal. And then we want to turn again, turtle geometry. This is totally Robert Frost's thing. Um, we need to turn 360 divided by the number of petals. Okay, let's just try this. Awesome, this works. Let's try it with a different number. This works as well. Okay, so now let's try our script again. And we see that we get different um, flowers on different uh, branches. And if we take this one and we can see all the other flowers on all the other branches, this kind of sucks because we might miss out on really important things. And yes, as Jens mentioned, this is often what happens in software projects. You take one road and you add specific features and then you can't go back to the other way anymore. Um, and we want to accommodate more projects and we want to, um, we want to focus on widening the participation of people. And we want to increase the variety of projects that we can have in SNAP and we even want to add new modes of collaboration and we want to make it easier to customize Snap and to build extensions. And this is what Jens uh, will show you now, what we've been working on the past month. It's not totally done yet, but you get a um, sneak preview on the new Snap 7 version with all those things um, included that I just mentioned. Thank you, Jedka. Um, so let me share my screen again. So isn't it nice that we can kind of visualize poems and snap? That was something that we thought uh, would be interesting. So um, let me switch to the next um, thing. This is... Um, now, the path that we've taken, the road that we've taken, I just want to kind of reflect a little bit of what's new since the last um, SNAP conference. There's actually been a lot of news, some that you already know, some that you um, might have missed, like uh, way right, right after uh, last year's SNAPCon, Bernat implemented um, a way for us to browse senders and receivers of messages. And I don't miss Bernard's talk about where he got this idea from, hint it's small talk. Um, we got a new way to export single custom block definitions, including their dependencies. We have this way where we can extract single blocks. I think Simon Walters was instrumental to demanding that. Um, we've got the new ray length block that Bernard showed um, at, at Snapshot. Um, you have new ways of finding blocks, and it just took us um, 13 years to add undelete for sprites. Um, so all of this is, is new since the last version, but this isn't what the next version is going to be about, because all these things are already there now. What we're working on right now, and I'm, I'm showing this in this crooked fashion because it's, it's not yet done, it's, it's still very buggy, 
but you can still already play with it is kind of the new version seven. We're not going to release it until it's done. That'll take a while, but I'd like to give you a heads up of what you can expect. And some of you, especially those who are working on special extensions, a little heads up of how you can um, kind of start programming in your extensions. So there are some big new things um, in, in the new version. And in fact, we are looking at the new version. And the first thing is scenes. Um, so uh, we wanted to be able to use Snap um, so, so we can have more than one project inside Snap. We can have several stages in there and we can switch between these scenes. So if you have more than one scenes right now in the in the dev version, kind of you see here's my here's my world map project. Here, here was my starter screen. This kind of works like um uh like it, like any presentation um like like keynote um so you can just add um you can make a new scene and um then you get a new scene and you can program that. Um so that's new. Um, you might have already seen that um, there is a new thing in there, which is a unified palette. And that has been the work of Michael Ball, um, who's working with Dan on a new middle school curriculum. Um, and so I think the idea is that sometimes you want to make a version of Snap or a configuration where you don't show all these blocks, but just a few of them. And then it's easier if they're all in one palette. Um, so we're currently a little, little undecided. The young folks uh, like uh, Bernard and Yadga, uh, and of course, Michael love this unified palette more than the different palette. The old folks like me and Brian are a little more skeptic about it. So you'll have the way to switch between both of these, like there's a single palette um, or the multiple palettes as they were before. And Aside from uh, from the unified palette, um, it's it's really also about hiding blocks. So already you can hide blocks for your project by right clicking on them uh, and hiding them, and then you can unhide them again. Um, but that was only for built-in blocks. You couldn't do this for custom blocks. So now we're working on a way so you can also do this for custom blocks. The way this works right now is like if you edit it, you can, in the block editor, you can hide it in the palette. By default, it's shown in the palette. If I hide it in the palette and apply, you no longer see this right text block here. And the reason why we're working on this is again, so you will be able to make projects, to make little extensions where you only show the blocks that you want the students to use but you might have some blocks that you don't want them to use because they're not necessary. They might be like the classic example is they might be helper functions that you use to, to compute an intermediate result. So, so this block really isn't needed. It's not part of the user interface that you want to present in class. Um, we're still working with this on this, which is why we didn't release it yet. But this is one of the features that we want you to be in control basically over the palette, over what you find in there. So the other thing that's 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 going to be in there once once you're in control, um, you probably also want to make your own category. So you can do this and, and make a new block category. Um, so you can say, uh, my category of blocks, and then you can choose a color. Um, uh, let's, let's choose this color. And then you get a new category of blocks here. And now if you make a new block, you can choose it in here. Uh, and you get, my keyboard kind of sucks. Um, you, you, you get a new color and you can, you can make, um, new block here and you can you can go to that um, palette again and you can make many of these palettes and it's not yet clear whether that's a great idea so I can make another ca category like another um. so as you're doing these categories and you make blocks in them um, 
and you export them into a library or by right clicking and exporting them. If you import them into another project, you will also get those categories again. Um, so, so this kind of lets is the idea that, um, for example, hardware makers like BirdBrain will be able to have categories for their blocks, but also Eckhart's uh, SciSnap uses a lot of categories for astrophysics or things that don't fit in these traditional um, categories. A huge thing is about extensions. As you might have noticed, the way we did extensions right now was that we use the JavaScript function block. Now that JavaScript function block no longer is there by default. It is only there if you enable JavaScript functions, um, JavaScript extensions, then you'll see it. And the reason why we had to disable it is because it could be used for malicious programs where a student turned in uh, a program and it played a prank or a practical joke on somebody. And it um, actually, in one case, it was a little more than a practical joke. It, it kind of led you to another website that made you believe it was ours. So we had to disable that. It's still in there. And most of you have probably noticed it. So many of our own libraries need the JavaScript function block, but you need to go into edit mode and enable it before you can use these extensions. And that's more of a self-defense way. It's not really how we want things to be. So what we really want you to be able to do is to write your extensions without having to turn on JavaScript functions. So we've been thinking about a process, how you can do that. And what we've done is we've gone through all these libraries and looked at all these, all these blocks that are in there. Wait, no, that I, I want to search for a block. And there is one there are two hidden blocks that you'll find when you search for blocks. These are called primitive. And there is a reporter version and a command version, and they have a huge dropdown. And these are really the primitives that we offer that you can use for, for example, here you'll see all the map primitives that I used for the introductory example where I put pins on the world map. So basically these are all the, all the JavaScript functions that many people wrote for the libraries that we've been using so far that we've been representing as a JavaScript block. So we've just made them primitive and we use them in the new libraries. For example, this um, scene here uses the um, text library uh, of Brian and, and sometimes it'll just bottom add to, to primitives. So what used to be a JavaScript function block now is a primitive. So you can use these primitives in your own libraries or you just use the libraries. If you load any of the new libraries, they will just work again. You won't need to um, enable JavaScript anymore. So you will be able to um, just reload the libraries. They'll overwrite the ones that you already have. And then your projects will just work again without forcing your users to go to edit mode first because these primitives are safe. Um, they can't harm anybody. But of course, what we also like to support is to make your own primitives. So we want you to be able to add your own functions to this dropdown and to publish that uh, with us. So um, let me just switch over to, um, this is the a new file you will find in the source code. And this is for all of you who are working on extensions. Many of you have already discovered it. If you read through the little documentation on top of extensions, it'll tell you exactly what you can do to um, add your own functions that you need in your libraries. And then you can just call them using the function, um, the, the primitive function block. You can put your functions either directly into this file and issue a pull request or there is a meta function, and this is really the primitive for you. There is a, um, a load primitive in here that lets you load an external JavaScript um, file by URL. Now this will also require JavaScript extensions to be enabled because otherwise you could just load anything. But 
we can allow certain URLs or even better, we can include your JavaScript extension in our sources. Um, and I would really encourage you to, to do either. Like you can either host it yourself or you just uh, include your JavaScript file in the official snap sources. We'll pull them and we'll distribute them. And that'll have another benefit. That'll have the benefit that if people use snap offline without internet, they'll be able to use your extension. So this is really now the official way to extend Snap. It's still JavaScript. You can do everything. You can override things in Snap. You can change everything uh, that you want in your JavaScript files. Just please don't do one thing. Don't implement eval, uh, because that's specifically what we don't want to do. We don't want, want to have a, uh, an extension that lets people evaluate arbitrary JavaScript. This is really kind of the biggest news. And with this, we're really trying to um, encourage you to give it a try, to try this new version. Some of you have already done so. We're pretty confident that this will allow many of, maybe even of the forks that we currently see to just always stay on top of the SNAP code base. And so people who have really helped with this is, and I want to thank uh, Brian Brawl for this. Uh, Brian Brawl, Netsblocks, you're going to hear a lot about Netsblocks, a lot from Brian and Akash. Uh, Brian Brawl has really pioneered uh, this way of extending Netsblocks. And we've had some really great discussions with them. And we've just basically taken this idea from them. The idea to have a name primitive is also something that um, uh, John Maloney has really championed. And basically, all the programming environments that John has done. Back from Squeak uh, to uh, GP microblocks, this is the way. So if you've been contributing libraries to microblocks, this will be very familiar to you. And already, and this has been the great, um, the really fun um, collaboration between Turgut and Darius that I've um, told you about. Um, we have a way uh, to interact with robots using web serial that they've um, played with. So you'll have a new library in here. Um, that is the serial ports library. And with that, um, there's going to be a presentation, I think, from John. And I don't know what Togo Darius is probably going to be involved to show how you can interface um, with Snap now to boards or to other devices and even to to microblogs running on those devices. So that's another big news. Uh, we're going to be able to talk to robots directly from Snap without having to use intermediate servers or any, any mediating software. And the last thing that we're working on, this has been something that was pioneered by uh, Joan Glenn and also uh, by John Maloney again. Uh, John is just a source for so many things is that um, we're experimenting with packaging Snap as a progressive web app. So if you use the development version of Snap, you'll find in your browser in Chrome, you'll find this uh, in the URL button, this thing that says install Snap. And so if you install Snap, if you actually do that, you'll see this funky icon that'll change. That'll be the proper icon. This is just something I made very quickly. If you install this, um, Basically, what happens, you get this app that looks like a real app. Uh, and it, 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 it basically is a real app. It has all the, all the possibilities. Um, you'll find a proper icon somewhere. Uh, wait, where? Here, you'll find an icon in your, in your apps. And the greatest thing that I can't demo now is if you're offline, um, like if you don't have internet, and you open the costumes, for example, you don't need an internet uh, connection to open the costumes or the libraries. Uh, the same dialogues that you use online will work again. So this is something we're very excited about. It's still not done, um, but we're working on this and please, please try it. Um, okay, so wait, where was I? Oh, oh, look at that, it turned into its own thing. Amazing. 
Um, so, by the way, so you see these scenes for, for this presentation. So this has been really our fork, but as we've thought about what we're doing here about these forks, really what we're doing is um, something else. And we've looked for another poem that maybe is a little less pessimistic and maybe less of a parody. And since we don't really know much about poems, um, but um, there's this one poet that we know because um, Bernat and Ma are named their son by him, Marty. So it's a poem by uh, Jose Marti. And the second verse really is the one I can't really, I don't know Spanish. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm just going to simulate it. Uh, Yo vengo de todas partes. I come from everywhere. Yes, ya todas partes voy. And I'm going everywhere. Arte soy entre las artes. Art, I am among the arts. En los montes, montesoy. And on the mountains, I am mountain. And I'm going to head over to Yatka again for a visualization of that. Um, before I start that, um, Brian and Michael and Bernard have been posting the link to the deaf version in the chat. So if you want to try it out, um, please don't do it right now, but wait 10 more minutes to the break. Um, you can hop to the deaf version and try everything out. Uh, the links are in the chat. Um, and my final thing to do is to create a visualization of that poem, because um, this is more the road that we've tried to take. So um, what we have is people with a lot of different interests. So some are more interested in artsy stuff. Let me make that full screen for a second. Some like computing and the hard math stuff, some like music. So yesterday I attended an awesome music workshop from uh, Jens. I hope he can give it again at some point because that was literally the best workshop I've ever went to. Um, and some people prefer mountains or whatever and we want to accommodate all of them. So maybe we can find a way that's to, to, like, to create and to um, do snap that's more like the poem um, so um, we have a different approach and de depending on what we want to do we can be that so if we snap can be something for heavy computing for people who like that but snap can also be a tool to support people who prefer to be artists or it can be the mountain for the mountaineers um, so what I already said is that we want to have a lot of, or that we have people in the community that have a lot of different goals and a lot of different things that they want to do. And we want our community and SNAP to be welcoming to teachers who want to try out their own extensions. They want to come up with new curricular ideas, for example, like Dan and Michael's middle school curriculum. And we want to support that. And we want to accommodate a huge variety of projects. So people who are more interested in robots should be able to build their own extensions and connect their robots to SNAP. So we really want to widen the walls that SNAP has. Um, and to say it with the words of Jose Mati again, um, for we want to be the arts among arts and we want to be friends among friends. And we also want to be the mountains among mountains, or as Jens calls it, we want to have the new Montessori pedagogy. And with that, um, I would like to end the keynote and head over to your questions. I saw that some of you posted the que some questions in the chat and we're now happy to take them. Thanks for your attention. Let's give Jens and Yaga a hand. Thank you so much. Woo! Thanks. Wonderful, wonderful.